Noel Andrews describes the action. Well, it's the second round, and according to the computer score, they're level at three all. Uh, there's a bit of a contrast in style here. In the white shorts is Kevin Walsh from St. Coleman's in Cork and Trevor Roach. Roach relying a lot on that long left hand and a heavy right hand cross. But the busier of the two is his opponent. And there's a standing count. Well, he did touch down, but he's finishing off the count to eight. He's got with a few fairly sharp punches there at the start of this round. And certainly, Walsh looks as if he means business now in the second round. Big right hand. And he's upsetting his opponent here. Roach upset. And Walsh been checked for punching with the inside of the glove. It was Walsh from St. Coleman's and Cork on top of this second round. After an even first round, he's thumping away with that right hand. Inclined to, uh, oh, and there's a beautiful right hand. And it's all over. The towel was coming in from the corner just at that moment. They decided he'd taken enough. And that's a clean knockout and a bad fall there for the Dublin man, Trevor Roach, the start of the second round. Well, a bit dazed for a matter of seconds there, but he seems to have recovered now as he goes back to his corner. So out of the championships goes the Dubliner, Trevor Roach. Well, it's the last round and it's all to play for now in this round because the score is level at four all with three minutes to go. And Billy Walsh from St. Ibar's, Wexford, in blue. And the South Pole, Michael Roach. First round was shaded by Billy Walsh. The second by Michael Roach. And now at a score of four all. This the important round. This will decide whether Billy Watch's comeback is worthwhile or not. And I would imagine if he loses this, he probably won't box anymore. He's had a long career, a very successful career. He was keen to try and make the Olympic team once more. So he's back into the ring for these senior championships. But I don't think he's got the sparkle that he had a few years ago. Seven times Irish champion. Against a younger man, a man who was indeed runner up last year. He tidied up by the referee. A little bit of damage around the nose. And his timing not altogether correct in this contest. There's no doubt about it, Billy Walsh. I don't think he's going to win any more titles. Brings over a big right hand, all right. He's always the one who could turn a contest around in the last few seconds of a contest because he's always dangerous. He packs a hard wallop. He went hunting for it in the opening round, then the pace slowed down. And with the score level coming into this last round, this is the round that counts. And again, it's fairly even, this one. And again, the referee inspecting. The bridge of the nose seems to be damaged somewhat. Walsh almost loses balance there as he goes chasing after his man. Putting everything he's got into this last round. Hasn't been able to get the combination of punches together properly. It's still been a very even contest. A roach after a good second round still unable to stop Billy Walsh coming forward Walsh will try right to the end and there indeed is the end
the one that comes to eight six in the, the red corner of Michael Roach. Yes, Michael Roach the winner, and that's possibly the last time we'll see Billy Walsh in the ring. He's tried for a comeback, but somehow it has failed. But he was a great boxer, seven times Irish champion, an Olympian, European boxing. He was in it all. So the end of a great champion and after the fight. How many years ago is it since you put first put on a glove? <laughs> uh, well, back in many years. And I was seven years of age. I'm now 32, so seven years of age when I started. That's not and bad. When I went to school. 25 years of boxing. 25 years, I suppose. Yeah, I had four years break now. The last four years I haven't fought, but I don't have fought every year. I was in national final every year, except this year. Seven times Irish champion? Yeah, seven times senior, yeah. I went seven senior titles and uh, Olympics. Olympics, Europeans, World Championships. Yeah. You're a bit unlucky in some ways, I suppose, on Olympics, yeah, were you? Yeah, I've been to. Well, I've been around for this, well, three, I would say, and this, I came back for this one, which would be four. So I, I eventually I got to one of them and I felt unlucky maybe not to be to be as another one of them. So I've been unlucky in a sense, I suppose, yeah. Not to have achieved. Uh, my ambition to win a medal at the major games and uh, that's the reason why I came back while well, uh, well, I still had the time. I was 32 and I had the chance to do it and I didn't, well, again, I've, I've been unsuccessful. So I decided now that that'll be it. So I'll uh, go back to coaching the kids and play a bit of hurling the football and make sure I'm sick and I win something of this. But you've achieved an awful lot in boxing. I suppose, yeah, I have, I've had great times and I've, as I say, as I say, been seven times national senior champion and travelled the world, which I never would have done. Otherwise, from being an ordinary working class guy, it was been tremendous for me, and uh, I've thoroughly, really thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I put whatever I can back into the sport now, and hopefully, produce some good young lads myself. So you'll be a regular still in the stadium, oh, yeah, outside so, yeah. the ring mostly. Outside the ring, on the south side of the ropes. I won't be looking like this after. I'll be <laughs> hopefully, it'll be a little bit prettier. Well, thanks a million, Billy, and the uh, best of luck. Thanks very much, now. Yes, and a good hurler he is too. Apparently, at the end, eye on him. Well, this is the second round. Quite an exciting contest at light welterweight. Alan McGee from St. Saviour's in Dublin. He's got it all to do here. He's trailing 5-2 to two against Francis Barrett. Francis Barrett from the Olympic Club in Galway. Barrett is fairly new on the senior scene of boxing, but he's been a regular in the stadium here in underage boxing. He's won All-Ireland Juvenile Boxing. And indeed, quite a number of contests in junior, youths, intermediate, popular with the crowd. But here tonight, most of the support, of course, is for the local man, Alan McGee from St. Saviour's in Dublin. Barrett keeps the punches going. He throws punches from all angles. One, two good punches. A right and a left hand. His eyes glaze there for a second and the referee quick to step in and give him a, an eight count. He was caught with two good solid punches. A right and left hand. Now, is he fully recovered? This is what Barrett likes to do to stop his man inside the distance. And there's no doubt about it. But McGee is in trouble in the second round. Yes, he's caught again with a right hand to the chin. Almost impossible to stop this fellow Barrett the way he comes forward. He walks through the punches. He'll take a few, so long as he can get one of his own in. And he's devastating when he gets through with a combination of punches. He's caught with one, but doesn't blink. Having trouble there, the singlet doesn't seem to fit him properly. Again, this time, McGee scores with a few good ones, but then runs into more trouble. Well, 
he seems to have recovered. Alan McGee, but he's still behind, I should think. The punches are flowing in, and there's another count for him. And a disheveled looking Francis Barrett goes over to the corner there. Well, the man in trouble is Alan McGee. And there's the end of the second round. Well, there's Francie. Well, it's the last round. Contest that started up, started off fairly tough and fairly even, but bit by bit, this man from Galway, devastating puncher, Francis Barrett, in blue, is way out in front in points now against Alan McGee from St. Saviour's in Dublin. Alan McGee has given it everything he's got, but no way can he stop this man. He's caught him with a few good punches, but Barrett seems to walk through the punches and then explodes his own on his opponent's chin. He's forced his man to take a few counts. And the tiring, weary Dublin boxer, Alan McGee. The man from the West, been punching away all the time. And the referee has decided he's seen enough in stopping the contest in the last round. Yes, as we said, Francis Barrett saying on his uh, shorts, he has no fear. He certainly boxes like that. Well, now staying in the same division, let's look at Mark Dillon against Jonathan McComb. And again, there's some power punching to look out for. Mark Dillon from the Golden Cobra Club in Dublin and Jonathan McComb from Antrim. Now, uh, Mark Dillon comes here with a reputation as a big puncher, and he's very popular here with the crowd. It's a style of boxing that the crowd loves to see. Now, McComb is quite an accurate boxer, and he's going to try and keep this fall at the end of straight punches. Dillon will put on the pressure all the way through. He's prepared to take a few punches, for as long as he can get in with his own. He's won a lot of bouts inside the distance. And so far, he's putting all the pressure on McComb, but McComb using the ring fairly well, making a miss. There's always the danger to the big punches. He, he runs into the danger area himself and could be caught as he comes in. He doesn't land first. There he's caught with a fairly useful left hand of the face. Dylan, all the time looking for the knockout punch. In the meantime, McComb, a contrast, is trying to score the points, stay out of danger, pick him off. Dylan, from the Golden Cobra. He's really chasing him. Well, it made a bit of noise. I don't know that it was such a great punch. It was, might have been a bit short, but it caught his man cleanly to put him away altogether. Now that's a bit better. Hooks well with the left hand on the right. Now, he's on the receiving end of thunderous punches there from Dylan. And they've decided to take him out. His corner threw in the towel and said he's had enough. And he was holding his own reasonably well at the end of, at the start of it. But there's this really hard puncher in Mark Dillon from Dublin. Ooh, the national championships a little bit later on, but it's time now for us to go racing side. Well, it's the last round. Welterweight contest. Belfast and Cavan. I'm afraid for the man from Cavan, John Mitchell. Not a great fight so far, and he's caught with a right hand. Michael Blaney has been in control all the way through against this experienced boxer, John Mitchell. The 
Blaney is showing great promise in this bout here. He hasn't made a mistake all the way through. He's dictated, he set the pace, he slowed it down, kept it, lose his balance. Again, jabbing well with the left hand. And Mitchell at times looks a bit frustrated. He goes wild trying to land his big punch because he knows that if he could just flip one on his opponent's chin, the whole thing would be turned around. Blaney almost impossible to find. Blaney walks onto a left hand there. This is the kind of time you could get careless because Mitchell is a fellow who's dangerous right up to the very end. Well, Shoelace has to be attended to now. Mitchell, quite well known here in the stadium. He's in, been in some very hard battles over the last few years. Lost a couple of years ago, I remember, to Billy Walsh from Cork in a quite a tough contest here. And he's trying to draw this man into a, a real wild scrap. But Blaney knows exactly what he's doing, and he's been keeping it at long range. Mitchell, unfortunately, has never really been able to get into this contest. Never got started properly. A little bit of tidying up there from the referee. Well, this tall Michael Blaney, the long left hand, outstretched. Drawing his man on to an accurate right cross every so often. There once again, a standing count. I'm afraid any chance he had now, well, it's fading completely. And Blaney boxing as he wishes now in this last round. In absolute command. And Mitchell for a man who's had quite an amount of experience in top-class boxing, way behind in that contest, so that perhaps there's a lesson there somewhere. Blaney may be one that could go well in these championships. Yes, Blaney winning that one on a score of 25 to 11. Mick Dowling still with us, and Mick, uh, that was pretty straightforward, wasn't it, really? Yes, it was, but it just goes to show that, uh, you know... From the start of round one. Well, this is our first glimpse of the light heavyweights this year's senior championships and we have two fairly good light heavyweights here Sean Collier from the Loch Gorman Boxing Club and Simon Blue he won the intermediates a couple of years ago and looked a very promising light heavyweight he's boxed in the seniors before hasn't won them as yet maybe this is his year now his opponent here is from Cork from the Rye Lane Club John O'Leary John O'Leary hard punching boxer but the mobility should be with Collier here Collier will no doubt try and use the ring and stay out of distance a lot of the time and jab away with his left hand and try and steal the points O'Leary will be looking for the big one that's a nice clipping left hand to the chin there count in this opening round now as the writing on the wall Collier is uh, certainly dictating it so far in this opening round these are the big men oh and he's gone completely walks right onto it and that's the end of his interest in these championships and it's good night Sean Collier by the way is the physical trainer for the Wexford hurling team and they were there last night apparently to cheer him on now that win means that he's now faces Gordon Joyce 
uh, this evening at the National Stadium at 7 o'clock. All right then, let's go back again to the light middleweights and another who uh, might do well in these championships. He's James Kelly from Manor Hamilton and at the start of round two, he leads Frank McQuaid by five points to nil. Second round at light middleweight. And the man to watch here seems to be from Manor Hamilton, the intermediate champion, James Kelly, the taller of the two. He's been building up the points very freely in that opening round. Forced his man to take a count, standing count. Continuously scoring. No scoring punches worth talking about from his opponent here. Frank McQuaid from Trim. Told to keep his head up. McQuaid frustrated just can't get in close enough to land a few decent punches there he's picked off again this is a one-sided contest look for a while as it's going to be stopped in the opening round now is it going to fall into the same pattern again here of one-sided boxing in the second round Be interesting to see how this man progresses, James Kelly, but progress he will. Unless something extraordinary happens in this contest. From Manor Hamilton, James Kelly seems to be the man to watch. There's another count for Frank McQuaid. He indicates he's all right to continue. I don't think he's going anywhere. The referee has decided to stop it, and wisely so. There's no point in carrying on. Clear-cut winner. He was going to continuously build up points there. So it's a good win for James Kelly from Manor Hamilton. Yes, it was a good win uh, for James Kelly, and he now fights Michael Roach. Remember, we saw him. Bay. Sean Murphy. It's a super heavyweight bout, and as we join it in round three, Douglas is in trouble. He is down by seven points to one. Noel Andrews picks up the action. Big George, as they like to call him here. Popular character in the stadium. Dairy Farmer from Southmead Boxing Club. I somehow feel his days as a champion are numbered. He lost to his namesake last year, Paul Douglas. But he's been champion several times. I, I think he's going to lose this contest. Oh, dropping his head. And the referee, again, a warning for dangerous use of the head. And this could change the whole contest because the penalties are very severe. And George is chasing after his man in this last round. He feels now he has a chance of winning it. And there's trouble with the headgear. So this could be an interesting result in this one. Murphy been warned twice, and so will lose two, four full points. But he had built up a good lead. Both out on their feet at this stage. Gumshield lost. And we stop the boxing again for. Uh, we rinse out the gum shield and replace it. This has been quite a, a lengthy last round, uh, even though the bell comes now with all the stoppages. 
and a weary boxer back to his Good corner. Ready, Sweeney, please take Judge three in the next contest. Now, the winner of that contest, 10 points to five in the blue corner, Murphy. Yes, Murphy is the clear-cut winner, so out of the championships goes a former champion, George Douglas. Out indeed, good win uh, for Sean Murphy. Uh, Bun Crana, I should say, while the Trinity student O'Connor is from Knock the Goshel in Kerry, and he was most impressive when winning the intermediate title recently. He's in blue, and here's Noel Andrews. Second round, super heavyweight. At the newly crowned intermediate champion, Tim O'Connor from Knock the Goshel. There's a standing count, and he's not too pleased about it. The Ulster champion, Thomas Clare, not too pleased that he's been given a standing count. He was caught with a good, sharp, hard left hand to the face. Well, there's a little bit more life coming from Clare now in the second round. Thomas Clare, Bun Cramer. Lost the first round. He's only two points behind. Well, certainly not beyond reach at this stage. I kind of go wild with those punches. None of them getting home, though. Certainly, Claire settling into the contest a bit better now, trying to draw O'Connor, make him miss, and catch him off balance with a counter punch. Instead, he moves away, to settle the ring. He's been urged on from his corner now after a disappointing opening round. Well, it's been a recovery for Clare. It looked as if uh, he was fading in that first round, but he's come back into the fight. And this is a good test for Tim O'Connor. Only just graduated to senior boxing. student of Trinity College. His best punch by far is the left-hand jab. Again, it's the left hand that's doing the good work for him. And Claire has no real answer to that left hand. Now, Bocconic can only put together a good right-hand cross. He'd have all the ammunition he needs. And there's the end of the second round. Second round. Third and final round. Well, it's the last round at super heavyweight. Tim O'Connor from Nakhnagashu in blue. In front, or just about, against this tough customer from Bontrana, Thomas Clare, Tom Clare. Clare seemed to be in trouble in the opening round, but he came well, came back well in round two, and held his own there. But he's trailing by two points to the intermediate champion, Jim O'Connor. O'Connor's best punch is left hand. Jabs well with the left hand. But hasn't been able to connect properly with the right. As the bout goes on, Claire seems to be the one who's getting stronger.
There's a couple of good left-hand jabs there. Quiet in the corner, says the referee, to Thomas Clare's corner from Buntrana. Here's O'Connor back again. He whips in a right hand at last. It scores with a reasonably good one. He's bleeding around the nose now. The referee wants to tidy him up somewhat. So you can see if it's anything serious. And all seems to be in order. Referee says box on and this final round. And Claire is the one who's behind on points. Now can he pull this one back two points? And Tim O'Connor beginning to look as Sorry sight. Blood streaming from his nose. Yes, Claire is getting through now. Thomas Claire, but quick as a wing. A super heavyweight, not a guy shall hits back. This has developed into quite a punch up in this last round. They were slow to start, but now that they've got into it, it's really flying. Now is it too late for Claire to pull back? O'Connor in front. There's Dan Curran looking after him in the corner, fixing the headgear. This headgear business has become quite a problem on this opening night of the National Senior Championships. between them in this final round. O'Connor has recovered. He's coming back. I think he'll hold on to his lead all right. It looked for a while as if Claire was going to take over. It's Oh, there's a good one. And Claire is in trouble in this last round. And there's the bell. And what a punch up in the final round. Uh, yes, O'Connor's the winner, deservedly so, but it was a tough contest. He certainly didn't get it easy. Didn't get it easy, but came through it all right. Mick Dowling is still with us. Mick, you were telling me that Tim O'Connor was known as the not Nagosh Clifford from the Cork Club, Rylan. He's in blue. We join it in round one. And it's Dublin and Cork here from Ballymun, Dean Ward in red. Dean Ward and Ted Clifford from the Rylan Boxing Club. Clifford, fairly experienced. He's been in some good scraps here in the stadium. Dean Ward with a fair amount of support from Billy Bunn. He's definitely hunting for the big punch. Trying to crack a big right hand under the chin of Clifford. Clifford, tricky enough customer. Clifford walking in there, offering no defense at all. He's leaving himself wide open with that big right hand. Taking terrible chances when he moves in. Ward, a big puncher. Runs onto a big left hand there. And they're certainly throwing big punches here. 
That left hand is a good punch from Ted Clifford. This is quite a contest, this. They're punching hard. And they certainly could take one. Now, it could be who's going to stay the pace the better. And Ward seems to be flagging somewhat towards the end of this first round. Come on, Ted! Clifford waiting, waiting for his opponent to make the first move. And then he counters, and he counters well there with one, two, three good punches. And no real report, reports there from Dean Ward. Well, it's the final round. Unless something unexpected happens here, it looks as if Ted Clifford is the man who's going to go ahead on this. Ted Clifford from Rylane in Cork and Dean Ward from Ballymon in Dublin. It's been a fairly cool performance from Clifford. He could be taking chances against this boy because uh, Clifford has been relying all the time on the left hand and scoring well. But in this last round, he's really putting in an effort now for a punch up, and that might suit Dean Ward. There's been a fair amount of uh, punches landed at this boat. And two really weary battlers now in this last round. And Dean Ward, I don't think he's got too much left in him now. Or has he? There's that left hand again, continuously in his face from Clifford. He sinks one, and that has taken the wind from his sails. Now, will he continue? Yes, he says he's fit to continue. But Clifford has him at his mercy now, I think. Clifford up on his toes. He's aiming again with that left hand to the body. Certainly, War oh, doesn't like those body punches. That left hook to the body. And again, some medical attention. getting more and more confident as the contest comes to an end. He really ripped in some good punches in that last round. Yes, a clear win and a good win for Ted Clifford. As Noel said, impressive there. He hasn't really gotten into this fight the way he'd like to. He's been allowing Crowley to set the pace.
Crowley has been the one who's been dictating the contest almost throughout. There's the one of the best moves now from Kelly. If Kelly could get through with a few punches, build up some confidence, he might get back into this contest. That's more like it. A good chopping right hand to the chin there from Alo Kelly. Crowley looks the bigger. Good left hand, right hand. And as he comes through there, Alo Kelly sinks in a good punch to the body at the end of the second round. Well, there's only three minutes left in this contest. And the boxer with major problem here is Alo Kelly from Brusna in Offaly, as he's way behind. The computer is only get credited him with one point. His opponent has six. That's Brian Crowley from Ennis. These are two promising young middleweights. Though in the case of Alo Kelly, most of his boxing has been at light middleweight. the intermediate champion and indeed Crowley himself has won that Crowley a very strong middleweight that's a bit dangerous the way he dropped his head that time but for these are are only new to senior boxing and the winner of this will go into the ring in the semi-finals next week against Dennis Galvin. And that's going to be a real test. As Galvin is one of the most experienced amateur boxers in the country and also one of the hardest hitters. And it'll be interesting to see how the winner of this will fare off with him. And it looks as if Crowley is going to be the winner here. Boxed well throughout, took command right from the word go, and he's been in control ever since. And Kelly has been trying to get back into the fight, and indeed he's putting in quite an effort in this last round. But it's probably too late. Kelly has been very apprehensive and nervous, I think, in the opening round. Warming to the task now, but it's probably too late. Well, these are the senior champions of the future. And there's little doubt, but these two boxers, each of them, will do well in the next couple of years. Yes. Good round of boxing in that last round. It livened up somewhat. And I'd say Crawley is happy enough with that. Kelly just didn't get settled in quick enough into the contest. Yes, clear cut win. So he's into the semi final. Brian Crowley from Ennis. Okay, and let's return again for our final wrap up of thoughts to Mick Dowling on that particular one. Brad is moving streets ahead and then against Mark Dillon from the Golden Cobra Club in Dublin. Two very exciting boxers, but the power punching of Francis Barrett is proving to be too much. He's a real natural, Barrett. Always seems to move the right way. And he has frustrated 
Dillon, who has won a lot of bouts inside the distance, and even that, he loses balance. And that in itself can be quite upsetting to a boxer like Dillon because he's won a lot of bouts inside the distance. He's a power puncher himself, but he's met his match in Francis Barrett, and Barrett has been out punching him, out maneuvering. And he keeps his cool, can take a fairly good wallop because he took a few of Dillon's best and never gets flustered. Barrett is a good, cool customer. All Ireland Youth Champion, Junior Champion, Intermediate Champion, and now in senior boxing, has he enough experience to go all the way to win a title and might even make the Olympic team. But first he's got to win this, and then he's got to win the final next Friday night. It's developing into a rather one-sided contest. This colorful man from Galway. The crowd behind the Dublin are, of course, Mark Dillon, who has given up his best, and he'll still fight right up to the final bell. He won't give back, go back. But he's running into dangerous punches there again as a count for him. And he looks as if he's frustrated, cannot get his timing together. Used to cracking home solid blows, takes an eight count, and now he's going for all he's worth. But Barrett will keep his cool and keeps pushing him back. And there, once again, a standing count indicates he's all right. The referee not taking too many chances, gives him an eight count once again, and he's stuffing the contest. He's decided he's seen enough, and Barrett far too much in front at that stage anyway, because he went into that last round, 19 to six. So it was a no-hope situation from for Mark Dillon. So there is a great new prospect in Fran Francis Barrett from the Olympic Club in Galway. 14 points to seven. The champion Adrian Patterson in red. He's in the lead. He doesn't have to chase his man. He's got the points. And there he scores two good lead right hands again. Highland. At sea almost in this last round. Showed promise in the opening round. We thought for a while there might have been an upset. But eventually Patterson got into his routine of good, cool, clean boxing. Scoring and relying a lot on that right hand lead. Uses the ring well. But he must keep his concentration. And it's becoming a one sided contest now in this last round with the young Darren Highland from Dublin. He's a few more things to learn at this level of boxing, and I've little doubt that he will. Round of applause there for a good, clear, accurate display of boxing from Adrian Patterson, the champion. Uh, the winner of that contest, 21-7, in the red corner, Adrian Patterson. Yes, clear-cut win there for the champion, and he's into the final now, Adrian Patterson. Dennis Galvin, the former champion in red. Crowley has been smart. If he can keep us cool, he could win it in this last round. There's a sinking left hand to the body, scored by Galvin. A good, hard, solid left hand to the body. This has been quite an entertaining middleweight bout. A little bit of tidying up there. And this is the last round. Dennis Galvin, Moat, County, County Westmead. That's where he learned his boxing in the early days, now in Dublin, where John McCormack is teaching him and developing him at St. Saviour's Club in Dublin. Crowley from Ennis. Coached and trained by a former middleweight champion in Ali Markham. Galvin going for his man now, and this is the last round. 
but sneaking points every so often is Brian Crowley. And this has been quite an intriguing contest all the way through. The contrast, the big puncher in Dennis Galvin. And Crowley, less experienced, using the ring well. And that was a very entertaining middleweight bout. You don't often see a good class middleweight bout like that one. And the winner of that contest is the five in the blue corner of the Yes. And Brian Crowley has beaten the former champion Dennis Galvin, and he's the man to watch now in the final against champion Brian McGee. Renahan in blue here, very strong, hard boxer who's been carrying the fight to his man throughout and scoring well, forcing Kama to take a count of eight in the second round. And he looks to be the one we'll be seeing next week in the finals. As he plods his way through there with good, solid punches. Come on, trying to maneuver his own, get some power into his own blows, but he doesn't seem to have that power left now. Seamus Kama from Waterford, St. Paul's Club. He scored a few times quite well with a left hook to the body and to the head. But strangely enough, the computer didn't seem to uh, register the punches he scored in the second round. He's training now six to one. It was at the start of this last round. And he looks as if he's running out of energy now in this last round. And certainly running out of time. Ranahan still leaps forward. He stays in front, I should think, on the points. Cut off balance. Almost went down that time. And here once again is a count for him. Says he's all right to continue. But he looks weary and tired. Lost his balance completely there as he crashed into the ropes. Now there's the end. He did well to last out the full about there because this is a good hard puncher in Ranahan. He caught him with some hard ones, particularly at the end of that third and final round. And the winner of that contest, 14 1 in the blue corner, Martin Ranahan. Yes, he's into the final once again. And the winner will he make it this time and win the gold medal. Marty Ranahan. Start of the second round. And so far, Stephen Kirk, this tall boxer from the Cairn Lodge Club of Belfast, in front. But it's not beyond the reach of Adrian Sheeran. It's five to th two, three. Sheeran will keep battling through. Kirk caught his man with a few good solid punches in the opening round. He's trying to find his range again. He's a good puncher, Kirk. He's won quite a few bouts inside the distance. If he can get his timing right with that left hook, he gets an awful lot into it. A lot of speed and power. The bustling style of Sheeran may present a bit of a problem, but that's the only way Sheeran can win this, is by bustling his way through and getting in close, walking through the punches. But he has to take chances, and he's taking chances against a hard puncher. Kirk has a problem bleeding from the nose, though. And there he's trapped on the ropes and slips away. That was one of the best attacks there so far by Adrian Sheeran. Oh, there's the big punch. That's it. He's the man with the punch. And he certainly dazed Sheeran. Will he continue? No, he stopped it. The referee has decided to stop it because this fellow Kirk is a hard puncher. Remember when the Ulster seniors there a while ago, he beat Mark Delaney, the successful professional fighter now. The same way he stopped Delaney after being behind on points. So the champion moves on to the finals. Yes, action there from the national senior box. Made it here to the semi-finals in these All-Irelands.
but Higgins has been picking them off and scoring the points now leading eight to three at the start of this third round so it would look at this stage as if Higgins just has to coast along and defend his title in the final next week but Webb may think otherwise and he can catch him with a big punch as he'd hardly hold back the points at this stage Clash of blows there. Fairly level scoring. That's not good enough for Webb. Webb beginning to look weary and tired. And this is the final round. Pushing forward, throwing all he's got. I don't think he has much ammunition left. Francis Webb from Holy Trinity. And this is the final round. A hard contest, not a spectacular one. But certainly Webb has made Higgins work every inch of the way. The score line may show that Higgins is a clear winner, but hasn't been easy. Catches him well with the right hand, but slaps somewhat with the inside of the glove with that left. the winners qualify for the European Championships and possibly the Olympic Games. Well, McDowling has been watching the action with me, his views a little bit later on. Right now, though, we pick up on the story of a boxer who hadn't fought since last May because of injury, but tonight set out to defend his national flyweight title. Well, that defending champion was Damien Kelly from Belfast against David Sweetman from Dublin. We pick it up in round two. The commentator is Noel Andrews. Well, it's the second round, and Damien Kelly certainly seems to be back in the top form again. David Kelly, who was out through injury for quite a long time. And he's back looking the best of form against David Sweetman, newcomer to senior boxer. Sweetman from the Golden Clover Club in Dublin. Uh, Sweetman, once he has that first round over, will have to let loose a little bit more in this round, but he could run into serious problems because Damon Kelly, an experienced boxer with a good punch in either hand, and he's quite hard to catch too because he's a reasonably good defense keeps it fairly tight doesn't take too many chances even against a man like Sweetman <laughs> Kelly remember has beaten some of the best in the world he, in fact he has beaten the world champion a man called Font from Cuba he also beat the American champion and he beat the British champion and here he is now going for his third senior Irish title Damon Kelly age 22 Combination tried for the Olympics four years ago. Well, tried to qualify. Had a trial with Paul Buttermer from Cork. He was only 18 then, just starting out. Here he is four years later. He's far more mature, stronger, very accurate with his boxing now. Damon Kelly. He needs a lot of competition. Sweetman still hasn't landed with what you'd call any powerful punches as yet. Every time he tries to step in, he's been met by the faster left hand of Damon Kelly. And Kelly uses the ring well, doesn't take any chances. He knows now he's way on point, head on point. He's happy and content to stay in front. Come on, Red, come on. 
This is the new face of amateur boxing, telling the boxers how they stand as the bout goes along. He knows he's way ahead on points now. So young Sweetman, Dublin. As Box International at junior level. Sweetman would like to have a bit of a puncher up here, but Kelly breaks it off. Kelly just wants to take, get a few good clean shots and then moves away. Well, there's the end of the second round. And Sweetman is doing well to stay there for those two rounds. Game and Kelly. David Kelly. The unit of score at the end of round two. Counters well with that left hand. Red 15, blue 2. 15 to 2. You can see how he's scoring so freely there. Scoring there with two good punches. And there again, one, two, three good clean blows for the face. And challenge the champion, David Kelly. Final round. Well, it's the last round now. And Kelly. And the boxing smoothly, comfortably, all the way through. Again, a barrage of blows. And the best of the pick there was a good straight from the shoulder, right hand of the face. Kelly throws the punches in nice clusters there and gets a good bit of power in that right hand cross. Sweet man. Trying to come forward there, but he's running on to punches every so often. Kelly, a good puncher. Kelly now has got to coast along in this last round, not take a punch, and score whatever he sees his opponent making mistakes. He can afford to coast along now. He's so far in front of points. Well, there's no doubt about it. This fellow Sweetman could take a blow. He's after taking a couple of hard ones there and still comes back. And in fact, Kelly seems to be the one who likes to break it off and not be drawn into a puncher. That's a good, solid right hand. That was a good, solid right hand from Sweetman, one of the best punchers. Gum shield. They need to be rinsed out and replaced. He landed with one big right hand, but also took one in the face. Good man. He wanted to stand toe to toe. He's prepared to stand there. Hoping that he'll catch Kelly with a lucky blow. Kelly surprisingly there and trying to slap a bit with the inside of the right hand glove there. A little bit more accurate with the left hand. Yeah. And still, sweet man will come forward. He's floundering a bit now. Trouble with the shoelace, I think. Yes. And there's only seconds left of this round now. Yes! There again, a good free-flowing left hand. And another one from Kelly. Sweetman stands, takes them, and hits back. Well, the crowd had thoroughly enjoyed this, and I think congratulations to Sweetman for staying the pace, staying the distance, and fighting right up to the end. He's prepared to make a fight of it. In fact, he's chasing after Kelly right up to the bell. But Kelly is the one who's been able to cash in on his mistakes, step in, and counter well all the way through this contest. So it looks as if Damon Kelly is back to his old form again after being out of boxing for such a quiet, long while with a damaged hand. Had to withdraw from the World Championships in Berlin last May after winning one contest owing to injury. And it's been a long road back for him, but he seems to be fully recovered now. And to many, he's our best hope of a medal in the Olympics, the first he to qualify in the Europeans.
an appreciation not only for the winner here but for a game display by Sweetman only for him it wouldn't have been such a good contest the winner of that contest 21-3 and the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Flyweight and the holder of the Cairns Perpetual Challenge Cup in the red corner Damien Kelly well, it sounds like a runaway win, but he still had to work hard for the whole three rounds. But that's the champion once again, Damon Kelly. Second out, round one. Round one at Bantamway, Damien McKenna in blue. <laughs> Damien McKenna, Estrada. A boxer who's improving an awful lot in the last uh, year or so. Boxed remarkably well on his way here to the final. And much the same can be said about Oliver Dudley. These are two young, promising boxers. Dirty from cold rain. In red. McKenna will try and use the ring and work off that long left hand jab. Missing with those punches, making a bit of noise, not getting right home. They want to get right onto the target to score the points. Again, a bit of noise, no real scoring. This is the opening round. Again, still hasn't found his range yet with that long left hand. Allowing Duddy to come forward. Trying to get there, he punches well with one good solid right hand cross. That's what McKenna's been trying to do, draw his man up. And counter. Duddy is obliging by coming forward. This could suit McKenna. Again, missing. Now McKenna's sort of boxer who would like to keep this pace down a bit, and that's the way he'll do it and just fade away, score with one good clean right hand to the face, and then try and back off, pick off the points, almost count them himself for this hand. <laughs> Duddy will go chasing after and try and slow him down. And again, Duddy not finding his reach, and McKenna is boxing remarkably well in this opening round. A lot of missing. Scoring won't be too high. Again, short with the punch. Duddy crowding for all he's worth. Crowdy. Duddy, a good, strong counterway. Oh, a good solid left hand. Also, one of Duddy's best punches. A good, clean. A good, clean punch for us. Dirty still chasing, chasing. He'll come forward. So to keep his head up at the end of the first round. And a great support for each boxer here. Second round coming up now. Jamie McKenna. And Oliver Dirty. McKenna. Cleaner hitter. There's Duddy trying to get back into this fight. Sinking in a good right hand to the body. Now, we've got the instructions from his corner to concentrate on the body because he hasn't been able to reach McKenna with those punches to the head. He scored with a couple of good right hands to the body at the start of this round. Robert Duddy won the junior title here three years ago. Runner-up. These championships to Tommy Wade. Demi McKenna. Blue here is a regular at the stadium. Fast improvement. Yet to win a senior title. The champion of this weight division. And the favorite was Willie Valentine. And he was beaten by Duddy. A little bit of tidying up there from the referee. Come on, 
So this weight division was opened up by these two boys, Duddy beating the champion, number one seed, and McKenna putting out the number two. On the opening round, McKenna in the lead. At three to nil, and Duddy doing a little bit more work in this second round. But he's been beaten to the punch again there by McKenna. McKenna is boxing remarkably well. He's a boxer who's improved an awful lot in the last few months, even. And he's using the ring well in the opening round. Now, he wouldn't want to get too close to Duddy here in a puncher because Duddy is a good, strong hitter. McKenna is more what we call the boxer. Score and move. Jab at the ball. And he's been catching his man quite well with a good right hand counter. Oh, and there he is again, crack on the chin. That's a good clean blow there from McKenna. Finding his measure every so often with that right hand cross. It's a good cracking right hand on the chin. Tries to catch Duddy as he comes in with it. Now, Duddy started the round by going for the body. Now he seems to have forgotten that. Oh, and there's a good reply from Duddy. Two good short punches, a left and a right hand to the face. That's the danger when they get in close. Duddy is a good puncher when they're in close. McKenna is the man to keep it at a distance. Quite a contrast to these boxers, and there again, Duddy getting through. Duddy is the man who may be able to stay the distance the better of the two. McKenna, who built up a lead, is he running out of a bit of steam now? And this is the second round. Oh well, Duddy came back into that somewhat towards the end of that round. Well, it's the last round as Damien McKenna, who has tried a few times before, tries to win. Is he going to win the senior title this year? It certainly looks like it, as he leads six points to two. But Duddy looked particularly strong towards the end of the second round. And McKenna looked as though he might be fading somewhat. But now he's got to hold his boxing together here and not stand and trade punches too much with Oliver Duddy. Duddy punches remarkably hard. Corner. Well, been asked to keep quiet there, and the man in the corner is Jamie McKenna's father, Christie, himself quite a boxer a few years ago. Wrestling and holding. McKenna's been working off this left jab on the right hand cross. His most punishing blow has been. Catching his man with that right hand as he comes in. A looping right hand to the chest. Now, Duddy will try. Two-fisted attacks. And they lose balance there with us the two minutes to go on this. The final round. A packed stadium. For this Olympic year, National Senior Championships. And Debbie McKenna from Drogheda snapping out the left hand again. McKenna is trying to stay in the safe zone now. He knows he's got a lead on points. He doesn't want to stand and slug it out with Duddy. Duddy trying to get close to him. But Duddy dearly likes a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle here. He's a good heavy puncher. But McKenna has been catching him. Now, how much has Duddy got left now? He's been throwing the punches for into this final minute. McKenna bleeding from the nose. Not going to worry him now if he can stay the distance. And there again, beats his man with a good cross, a good right hand to the face. And Duddy's timing going a little astray now in this last round. And a little bit of attention there for Damien McKenna, just to tidy him up and make him look a little bit pretty. And this is the last round. And it looks as if he's only seconds away from being the Irish champion. 
Dirty thinks otherwise, but I think he's running out of time now. Dirty still prepared to come forward, lead off with the punches. But McKenna has been smart, accurate. And again, snaps out the left hand. McKenna may look a sorry sight, but I can tell you he's not. He's a happy man after those three rounds. And again, an enjoyable contest, this time at Bantamweight. The winner of that contest, 11-4. And the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Bantamweight. And the holder of the Dog and Arnold Challenge Cup in the blue corner, Damien McKenna. Yes, clear cut win. And certainly deserved. Always in front. Always that little bit more accurate with his punches. So the champion at Bam in these senior championships. Hoping to make it third time lucky. Go. Patterson only one point ahead. Patterson the champion. Two years ago, he lost in these same championships to Paul Griffin, who dominated this weight division for a number of years. And of course, is now boxing professionally. So Patterson has moved into the number one spot. Carlisle is trying to dethrone him here. And Carlisle must keep up the pressure all the time. Must keep carrying the fight to this fellow and try and upset him if he's to win this, because Patterson the pace stays a slower pace he'll pick him off whips in a right hand Carlisle doing all the chasing Patterson works on the counter nearly all the time Adrian Patterson 20 year old student in Coleraine University seated number one Carlisle seated number two. Hey. Now Patterson beginning to uh, come forward. He's been waiting all the time for Carlisle to set the pace here. Carlisle has been putting in a lot of work. And it may be taking a bit out of him now with one more round left. When is the last minute now of this, the second round? The box are getting a little bit untidy when they get in close there. Checking them for doing a bit of holding. But again, no real clear punch has been scored there. For this second round, a reasonably good left hand from Carlisle. Well, Patterson looks as if he was going to win it easily for part of the opening round. He's certainly not winning it all the... Oh, he gets through with a few good, clean punches there. Carlisle runs straight onto them. And there's some blood coming from the eye there. He's going to have a closer... Uh, well, there's a cut. It's hard to see. I think it's just a graze beneath the eye. On the cheekbone. And Patterson looks as if he's going to finish this round well, with Carlisle still coming forward. It's just a, sh a slight nick just below the uh, left eye. No serious damage. The cumulative score at the end of round two, red and nine, blue two. Yes, he certainly is turning his man nicely and then crashing home that left and right. He scores cleanly on those exchanges, making Carlisle miss. Second out. 
third and final round. Well, Owen Montague in red here. And it's an up here climb for him if he's to win this one. But it seems out of his reach now. He's scored eight points to Lenehan's 14. Montague, a promising young boxer. This is really his uh, first taste of national senior boxing. Lenehan, he's been there before. And Renahan from Keady in Armagh. Always the harder hitter. The upset take, Montague in the opening round. Halfway through the first round, and ever since then, he's been dominating and setting the pace. Montague shows flashes of good, accurate punching every so often. And looks a promising young lightweight from Antrim, Owen Montague. Who regularly spar spars with another man from Antrim. Did you remember Mark Winters, who's now a pro? In the quarterfinals, he had a very good win over a former champion, Eddie Bolger. So he's had a good championship. Oh, so he'll have to content himself, I think, with... Uh, a silver rather than a gold. But there's plenty of time for him to develop. At 18, he's really only starting out in his career at senior boxing. Martin Renahan, he's the stronger one. He's coming forward throughout this bout. Seated number two to the champion Glenn Stevens, who was beaten at an earlier stage. And there again, it's weariness more than anything else. He's caught with a looping left hand on the chin. And there, a standing count for him in this final round. Not particularly upset, but really fatigued at this stage. Gets the stronger. Harder hitter is Martin Redhead. The Roman take scores every so often. He doesn't seem to get sufficient power in his punches to stop the flow of the Renahan blows. Renahan walks through those punches and loops in with his own. That's a nice move. Hooking with the left hand to the body and then to the head. And Renahan hasn't changed his style all the way through. He kept chasing forward, putting on the pressure. The winner of that contest, 21-10. And the Max Hall National Senior Champion at Lightweight and the holder of St. Andrews Boxing Club Perpetual Challenge Cup in the blue corner, Marty Ranahan. Right. Galway, the Olympic Club at Galway, a southpaw who hits remarkably hard with either hand. Now he's lacking in top class experience, but he's a devastating puncher. And Morrissey is a good, clean boxer. Morrissey, no mean puncher himself, but he'll try and keep this at long range. That's Johnny Morrissey from Sunnyside in Cork in red. And Francis Barrett, very popular with the crowd here. Colourful fellow to watch. He's won a lot of his bouts inside the distance. And he'll go and try and stop his man. Whereas Morrissey will try and outbox him and use the ring. Nicely balanced boxer, Morrissey. Seems to be deciding to wait for Barrett to make the first moves and he can counter. He's a good boxer, Morrissey. He's got a reach advantage here, and no doubt he'll use it. So it's Cork and Golda. The pressure coming all the time from the Galwegian Barrett. Barrett's going for the quick win here. He really lets those punches flow, and he gets a lot of power on them. 
But Morrissey is trying to draw his man onto that right hand, but he can't. Barrett moves in too close. Morrissey's trying to set him up for a right hand cross. Barrett, who looks a real natural in boxing, can hit with either hand, bobs and weaves, and can avoid blows quite well by rushing in close, rushing them aside. Barrett turns him, but misses on the counter. And this is the contest a lot of people who are waiting for. It. I look upon it as the most promising, and so far it certainly is a promising bout. The accuracy of Morrissey and this tough Francis Barrett will keep coming forward. And Morrissey from Cork trying to keep his boxing tidy and cool. Still trying to nail his man with a right-hand cross. Not able to measure him properly as yet. Punches, hop off Barrett, and he doesn't seem to even blink. Barrett, south four, and a real natural boxer. A little and nothing between these boys here. What a contrast. Now it's at oh, and he finishes well. Two good punches there at the, at the bell, scored by... Francis Barrett, that might even make a difference to the scoring in that round. Well, there's an awful lot at stake in this contest here. In red here is the tall boxer from Sunnyside Cork, Johnny Morrissey, and Francie Barrett from the Olympic Club in Galway. At the end of the first round, the score is 3-all. Oh, it's as if they started all over again. And Morrissey... The taller of the two, trying to keep this at long range, and outbox the hard-punching Barrett. Barrett got together with a few good punches at the end of the first round, but still, the score, level. That's a good right hand, a good solid right hand from Morrissey. That's what he's been trying to do, to catch his man with that right hand cross. Well, this fellow Barrett seems to walk through the blows. We certainly we're going to have a good champion here. Two strong boxers. Barrett perhaps with the edge and strength. But Morrissey with good boxing skills. Barrett, a real natural, walks into one there. He's a real natural puncher, powerful shoulders. Hits hard with either hand. Morrissey is beginning to find his range a little bit better now, or is he? It's a grueling battle. Morrissey, the taller of the two, had a clear-cut win over Fergal Carruth earlier on in these championships. He'll keep his boxing tidy. He's an accurate boxer. What we might call orthodox. Barrett likes a bit of a punch up. South pole. Try to trap his man in the corner there, but Morrissey wriggles away somehow. But the pressure is a tell. Another liver, uh, minute to go now, another minute to go, and this the second round. And again, it's fairly level pegging, but the pressure coming from Barrett from Galway as he plods through with a big right-hand lead. And Barrett is finishing this round well as he did the opening round. Punches don't seem to take any effect on him. He keeps coming forward. Start of the round, Morrissey doing well. And here's Barrett doing well, coming towards the end of the round. And again, it's a seesaw battle, this one. Oh, well, the end of the round. And 
to finish eventually with a couple of clean ones. The two minutes four at the end of round two. Red eight, blue seven. Oh, the red man, Morrissey, just that fraction ahead. Into the last round, Johnny Morrissey from Sunnyside in Cork, just one point ahead, eight points to seven. And this light welterweight final against a very colourful boxer from Galway, from the Olympic Club in Galway, Francis Barrett. Barrett's been coming forward, making a fight of it, pressurizing his man, getting through with hard ones every so often. There he gets through with a hard right hand and another one, and a left to follow. And Barrett's in trouble in this, this third round. He's got to slip away and cover up and escape the onslaughts from Barrett. He was one point ahead. Surely he's leveled up by now. Johnny Morrissey from Sunnyside. In a bit of trouble here. And here's Barris now. Leading with his right hand. And hurts Morrissey again. This is a remarkable fighter, Francis Barrett. He's a real natural. Hits hard with either hand. And Morrissey trying to collect himself, tidy up his boxing, get back to the rhythm he had earlier on in the contest, was fractionally in front. That lead now been withered away by the powerful punches of Francis Barrett. Morrissey has got to tidy up his boxing in this last round. We're still level pegging now in this final round. And this is sort of contest. Oh, a beautiful exchange of blows there, and Barrett seemed to get the better of that one. <laughs> Referee says stop. One minute left to decide this contest. It's still level pegging. And this is a real crowd thriller, this contest. crowd divided here supporting both boxers equally Johnny Morrissey from Sunnyside Cork the taller of the two in red and Francis Barrett from Galway Barrett this natural puncher very popular here in the stadium Barrett is the one who's staying the pace the better Morrissey tiring somewhat in this last round. And no wonder, he scores back with one good right hand, a good right hand cross from, from Morrissey. As we come to the end of what has proved to be a really thrilling contest, and Barrett seems to be the one who may snatch it coming to the bell, forcing his man into a corner. And the crowd enjoy that great applause. much better than that and there's more of that action from that last round but Morrissey trying to keep this man away try to keep it up long range but all the time Barrett is crowding and crowding walking through his punches Jackie Monaghan, and here's the result. The winner of that contest, 14-12. And the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Light Welterweight, and the holder of the Prince Ali Khan Challenge Cup in the blue corner. Yes, and he's the winner, 14-12, a close contest. And it could have gone either way, but he really proved himself that great in determination of the final round. The loser, please. And there's... A dis disappointment, the man from Cork, who was in front 
going into that last round. Well, what a surprise the way this fella came back in that final round. So he's the champion, Francis Barrett from Olympia. Round two. Well, it's the second round now. And the champion, of course, is Brian McGee. He's the champion. He's two points ahead against Brian Crowley. Crowley, who boxed well last week for beating five times Irish champion Galvin. That's the man McGee that won against last year in these same championships. These are two very promising middle middleweights. Young middleweights, not all that long out of underage boxing, either of them. McGee, good tidy boxer. Now he's two points ahead going into this round. That gives him a bit of confidence. So Crowley has got to do the work. He's got to be first and try and take control here to dictate this if he's to win. The champion in command. with those short punches every so often. Fades away from them this time. <laughs> McGee is the one who's setting the pace here, it seems. Crowley will have to be a little bit more positive in the second round. <laughs> this is really some punching now, the second round. Two hard punchers. Crowley allowing himself to be trapped in the corner there. And McGee having a closer look seems to be trouble with his eye there. He's calling for a second opinion by the looks of it. As the doctor examining to see if all is well. It's difficult to see sometimes with the headgear. Having a closer look. That would be a pity if it ends that way. Well, so it's all right to continue. I'm afraid he's stopping the contest. The referee is dead. He can't see properly, I think, through the eye. There's something wrong. So the champion, and there's, here's how it happens. It seems just there. Referee stopped the boxing there to have a closer look. And that's a disappointing end there for that contest. McGee in front, but it was still an open enough contest. And Crowley somewhat bothered with his vision, I think. His eye is closing up. That's a disappointment for Brian Crowley from Ennis. He goes out. But he'll be back another day. But that's the end of his interest in these championships. And he must be satisfied with runner-up, which in itself is quite an achievement. There's the champion, and a good champion of middleweight, Brian McGee, once again proves that he's the best. And there's how the score stood at the end. Nine points to McGee and three for Brian Crowley. Signet, and the commentator is Noel Andrews. This is our man now, Carl O'Grady. Winning this contest so far. And able to bob and weave and avoid punches to a certain extent. These are tricks he learns as time goes by. Punches to the body every so often. And again, sinks them into the body. Been told not to stop at the inside of the glove, though. 
Got to keep those punches clean. He shows a fair variety of punch. Bigger with that left hand of the face and when he sinks them into the body. And Douglas beginning to wonder now what he's to do to stop this uh, youngster. But Douglas game as he proved at the Olympic Games. He'll stay the distance with the best. And there's another minute left in this second round. Past the halfway stage of a hard punching heavyweight bout. And I wonder what Nicholas Cruz, the Cuban coach, thinks of this one of Carl O'Grady. Will he make it in top class heavyweight boxing? There's no mean achievement to win a European title at junior level. Douglas trying to rough him up in close. Not what you'd call a devastating puncher, Douglas, but a good heavyweight nevertheless. Wins most of his bouts. And points, and there's our cracking left hand. Douglas is hurt with that one. He was caught flush on the chin and hurt. And there's the end of the round. Douglas not too happy going back to his corner. This fellow now finding his range with the blows at the end of that round. While the crowd enjoying this heavyweight bout, the last round coming up here. Cahill O'Grady in blue. And Paul Douglas. Paul Douglas, the veteran of Irish amateur boxing in his 30s now. Said he was going to turn professional, but held on to in case he might make the Olympic team. But Carl O'Grady, well, he's only starting out his career, and he looks hot favourite to make the Olympic team. He's only 19. And there's a count for him. Douglas disappointed that he got a count, but he was caught with a cracking blow. Still coming, Douglas. <laughs> Douglas still coming forward. And he's running out of options now. Forced to take a, a standing count of this, the final round. And O'Grady has been in control all the way through here. Leading by 11 points to two going into this last round and certainly Douglas all at sea now there's not an awful lot he can do against this devastating puncher this teenager and one of the best prospects in heavyweight boxing we've had for quite a while and this has been a real test for him as Douglas has been in with some of the best and he's made him work for the whole three rounds Brady in the past was used to putting them putting them away when he lands those big punches, but Douglas has been able to take them and hits back every so often. One minute left. Now this has been quite a baptism for Carlo Grady and these national senior championships. And he's probably learned more in this fight and in a lot of his recent ones where he's won them inside the distance in the very first round. But here, Douglas has forced him to go the whole distance. He's taken some of the punch, the best punches. Inclined to time to slap with that left hand, Cahill O'Grady. Well, they're all things that can be corrected. He is a big puncher, but Paul Douglas certainly has plenty of heart. He walks forward, carrying the fight to Carlo Grady from St. Saviour's Club in Dublin, formerly from Southmead. An entertaining contest, and the crowd really appreciate that. Great cheer, not only for O'Grady, but also for Douglas.